Hey everybody and welcome to a live Q&A session about Dyslexia Awareness, Dyslexia 101. My name is Blake, I'll be your host tonight and I'm with a phenomenal team from the Lighthouse Academy for Dyslexia. Welcome everybody, we're excited to have you. Nice jackets. Thanks. Yeah, really cool. I, was, I missed the memo on that. Yeah. Uh, scene, so. well, I gave mine to Lauren. Hey, so we, uh, we're excited that you guys are here and everybody that's watching on Facebook, welcome. We already have several people who are tuning in tonight. We're almost 20 people already joining. One thing we would encourage you to do, we would love for you to do right now, is share this live stream. You never know whose friends you might have, somebody that may be interested in dyslexia, dyslexia awareness. Maybe they have a child who's been struggling with reading, writing, and spelling, and you, they want to know more, or maybe you want to know more. So one of the best things that you can do right now in this moment is simply click the share button right below this video. We would love for you to do that to help us raise awareness for this incredible cause called Dyslexia Awareness. So I want to turn it to the team because everybody's tired of talk, me talking right now, obviously. <laughs> so I want to turn it to you guys and let you give us a little bit of introduction about yourself. So let's start on this side of the table with sure. Lauren and uh, tell us who you are. I know who you are, but tell us right. about Right. So my name is Lauren Houston. I am just part of the team here with Lighthouse Academy for Dyslexia. Uh, we're excited to do this and I kind of got into the field um, by a personal experience when I was teaching kindergarten my first year of teaching. I had a group of students who um, I just couldn't get them to remember letters, the sound that went with those letters and it turned out that they all failed a dyslexia screener that I gave them and um, I immediately wanted to know how to help those kids. So. That's kind of how um, I got into doing what I'm doing, and um, I can't wait to answer some questions tonight. Very cool, very cool. So, Yes, yeah, so my journey to dyslexia therapy is kind of similar. I taught kindergarten for six years at a wonderful private school up in Laurel, Mississippi, and while we had a wonderful program, a great phonics-based literacy program to teach reading, every year we had a handful of students mm. that despite our best efforts, despite their best efforts, despite their parents' best efforts, just could not master reading. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I had a coworker there who got into the program, the Dyslexia Therapy Program at William Carey. She is now one of the instructors, Holly Hinton. Mm -hmm. And it is through Holly that I came to the Dyslexia Therapy Program at William Carey. And I'm excited to be learning. I'm still in the program. And I'm excited to be gaining the tools that I think I was missing before mm -hmm. to, be able, to be able to teach every child wow. to read. Mm -hmm. That's great. Kelly? Hi, I'm Kelly Roundtree. Um, I am a speech language pathologist. And um, I do the evaluations for dyslexia. And um, I'm here to answer questions tonight about um, anything that you may have uh, regarding diagnosis, uh, characteristics to look for, um, and how to set up an evaluation. Yeah, and I'm Tracy Variantes. Um, I got into this, oh my goodness, uh, I feel like I've been knee deep in dyslexia for a long time now. <laughs> So um, three of my four children are dyslexic, and when I finished homeschooling all of them, and the last one graduated, I um, met with Dr. Stina Holfield, and I was part of cohort two when William Carey program first got started. So awesome. um, yeah, so really proud to be a part of this, and um, excited for all the changes that we're going to be able to watch cool. happen. Yeah, in no doubt. Community. Yeah. So cool. Awesome. Stephanie? Hey, I'm Stephanie Hill, and um, I've been a school teacher for about eight years now. I was teaching in private school for seven of those years. Um, I was teaching third grade, and third grade is the year that you're supposed to be able to read well, you're supposed to be able to analyze text, and I had a third grader that year who couldn't, and she was dyslexic. I didn't know enough about dyslexia to help her, and her parents pulled mm -hmm. her from my class, wow. and I was devastated. So. I wanted to learn more, and I did, and I got into the program William Carey as well, and learned through that that there is a systematic mm. way to teach kids how to read, mm. and that just blew my educator mind. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> I am on a path, like all of these women, to do the same thing, to teach these kids, to find ways to to get through to them in ways that the public school and sometimes private schools can't. Wow. So. You know, I love that each of you have your own story of how you got to this moment and how, you know, we're starting this new work with Lighthouse Academy for Dyslexia. And a word that you guys have all been using is pioneers. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool to me to see how in each and every one of your stories, it started with there was something that you didn't know, that you knew was there, but you couldn't define it. 
And so that you went and trailblazed and made your own trail to find this way to reach these children. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So if you're just now tuning in, we've had several more people jump in recently. This is a live Q&A. So this is live. It's not pre-recorded or anything. So uh, we're all here. Kind of like, we don't know what we're going to say. It's going to be great. And that's right. So give us your questions. We want to know. Share it with someone that you think may be interested in learning more about dyslexia and dyslexia awareness. And let us know what questions you have. We would love to answer some of those live here tonight as well. But I want to get started talking about probably what everybody's tuning in to hear. Maybe for a lot of people there like me who don't really know much about dyslexia, you know, or a lot of people that, you know, it's a term we may have heard, but it's not something that we may really have known deeply. And so tonight you guys are going to give us a little bit of an overview of what this dyslexia is all about. So I'll ask a question that we have pre-prepared and look for some live questions as well. Um, but then you guys can just bounce around. I'll point it to one person, but if anybody wants to add in, feel free to do that as well. So, Sorrel, I will start off with you. You will be the guinea pig for the night. That's awesome. Can you kind of give us an overview? What is dyslexia? Sure, Blake. So, dyslexia is a learning disability. It is neurobiological in origin, which means it's happening in the brain and nervous system. Right. And it is... Um, Characteristically, it is shown up, shows up as um, difficulty in decoding words, mm -hmm. difficulty in fluently r recognizing words, and difficulty spelling. Wow. And it's a result of a deficit in the phonological component of language, which is the, the letter sound correspondence and storing that and retrieving that in, a, in an efficient way that results in reading and comprehending wow. language. And it's, it's often um, unexpected mm -hmm. compared to other cognitive abilities. So in other words, what Lauren likes to say is uh, dyslexia may be present when an otherwise intelligent child is struggling with reading, writing, and spelling. Wow, that is a phenomenal answer. And I don't know, I feel like I just attended like a university class <laughs> yeah. about that. And so if that doesn't tell you anything else about the night, is that we have the experts on dyslexia here. I mean, that was a phenomenal answer because now we know it's a lot more than just not being able to know your letters. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot deeper than that. It's a lot deeper than just not being able to read. You use the word neurological in origin. I think that those are the kinds of things that people like myself who don't you know, know much about dyslexia, we need to know these things, that there's a deeper need down underneath. So I want to pass it to Tracy and kind of give us a little bit of an overview. What are the warning signs that your child may have dyslexia? So uh, that's such a loaded question. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like opening Pandora's box because... <laughs> And the fact that it depends on what age we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It looks very different in a toddler. And yes, we can see signs in a toddler all the way up through adulthood. It looks very different in adulthood. And um, But some of the things that you might notice right at the beginning is that your child doesn't talk as quickly as everyone else. Mm -hmm. Maybe that language is delayed when they do start talking. Um, one of my children's name is Gabrielle. My other daughter often called her Bagabelle when she was growing up, and we thought it was a cute little nickname. I had right. no idea that switching those syllables around and those phonemes in mm. that word were a red flag, that right. she was having difficulty um, recalling language in the order that it, it should have been mm. recalled in. So, But I wanted to touch on something that Sorrel said that is so important, is that it's unexpected. So when you say dyslexia, a lot of times parents get this idea that they're just stricken mm -hmm. and they're mortified that this diagnosis comes out. And it's, it's really nothing to be mortified about wow. because our children have to have average to above average intelligence mm -hmm. to be dyslexic. Wow. And so it gets missed a lot in the schools because that child is generally verbal and mm -hmm. engaged and intelligent. So a really intelligent child with dyslexia can look quite average, mm -hmm. and you miss that high intelligence completely wow. based on their reading, writing, and spelling abilities. Mm -hmm. And I know this is something that you guys as a team are passionate about, is mm -hmm. to kind of move away maybe from that misconception of the word dyslexia, yeah. right. right? Of kind of getting that the, the, the word itself may feel a little weird as people are saying it. Like you yeah. said, it may feel like the end of the world, oh, I got a diagnosis. Right. Of dyslexia, but I love the fact that you guys say all the time that it's a superpower. Yeah, you know that these children are brilliant. They are, they are. And they are. Creative. creative, and they find ways because you know they may pass the test, but it's because yes. they invented a whole new way to do it. <laughs> yes, yes, that's incredible. And so uh, we had a question come through from Elizabeth Lee, 
And she said, I'm very interested in learning more about the testing part. My son failed the screener. So mm -hmm. we'll get Kelly to talk a little bit about that later. Uh, so Elizabeth, hang in there. We're going to have a whole section on testing and evaluation. It's going to be really good um, and, and can't wait to hear that. But I kind of want to move for a second to talk about our website because you mentioned something that there's a lot of different levels. So much. It's like opening up Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there's a parent out there that's watching today that's saying, you know, I need to test or I need to kind of mm -hmm. look and see if my child may or may not have it. On our website, if you go to the Dyslexia tab on lighthousedyslexia.org, there's a place there that has a whole list of ways that you can start to see if possibly uh, your child may or may not have dyslexia. So be sure to go check out our website. It's not just a place to learn about the school, but you guys as a team want to be awareness builders. Yes. And that's what I love is there's a whole tab about dyslexia. So that was a really cool thing as well. So I want to pass it over to Lauren. If a parent suspects that warning signs may be present, uh, if they're starting to see some things that maybe they read on the list in the website, what should they do? What yeah. should their next step be? Yeah. So if a parent sees these warning signs and they, um, either they filled a screener like Elizabeth has said, or even if they passed a screener and the parent's still like, mm, the something isn't quite right here. Um, the thing to do is to reach out to Lighthouse. We'll definitely probably refer you to Kelly Roundtree uh, to get a full evaluation done to see if um, dyslexia is present in that child. And then your next step is to get intervention as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, research shows that the sooner you can get that intervention, the better, because you want to get that intervention when the neuroplasticity is still there in their brain and the interventions work and new pathways can be created. So reach out to Kelly, reach out to us if, if you want us um, to give them a screener and um, let's get them help. That's great. I would hate to play Scrabble against you guys. <laughs> it's okay, a couple of us are just like, yeah. I was like, wow, neuroplasticity, like, oh, that's got to be like a 30-point word, you know? I was just thinking about that. We have to think about the spelling rules, though, to spell it. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Don't ask me to spell it. That's right, that's right. Oh, man, like so good. words into that word. <laughs> so, man, uh, you know, we've had a lot of people that have been tuning in. Um, Kristen... Ladner said, I wish I had you all when I was a child. Wow. So there you go. And I think that and goes we back wish we to. Knew these things when we right. were. That's right. So, yeah. speaking of that, Stephanie, I, yeah. I wanted to pass the next question. You kind of opened the doorway right there. Yeah. What is something <laughs> unexpected that one may find with someone who's dyslexic? Yeah, so there's a lot of things. Um, I guess the biggest thing that I have seen this past year is for one, they're brilliant. Dyslexic children are brilliant. And sometimes you might think that they can read. Um, they have learned coping strategies, especially the older ones, um, and you may think, oh, they've read this, or they know this, they must have read this, and they've got it, but they are so dang smart mm. that they have memorized, they could have memorized, their vocabulary can sometimes be so high. Mm -hmm. um, we have a second grade wow. student who probably has a vocabulary of a sixth grade student, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's just so surprising to me, and so some parents may say, well, well, my child, they can read, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that may be true, but there's a lot of holes missing probably, mm -hmm. um, some things that they may not have gotten fully when mm -hmm. they were in those young grades. I think that's super unexpected, so right. I think it's, it's important that they get that intervention at that young age mm -hmm. as much as they can yeah. um, to fill in those gaps for spelling and reading. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it really goes back to the building blocks. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the children are so smart that they'll invent their own tools mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. cope and to get around, but if we can imagine what we could unlock exactly. if we could give them the tools exactly. to not have to spend all that mental energy mm -hmm. you know decoding and writing and processing mm -hmm. wow that's phenomenal so i kind of want to move we had a couple of live questions that came in and um the first one is from sal Barrientos, mm -hmm. and he said is dyslexia hereditary oh that's such a good question Tracy, you want to take it? Yeah. yeah, so we haven't found the gene. There is no dyslexia gene, but we do know it's familial. Mm -hmm. um, in my own family, I told you three of my four are dyslexic, and we can trace it back. Um, an uncle and <laughs> my mother and myself, I mean, we can look at that, that tree and go, oh, wow, yeah, now mm -hmm. we know what, that's, what that is. And the amazing thing is it does also seem to come with, like Lauren said, this am amazing creativity side. So, um, you know, they're entrepreneurs and they're innovators and they're engineers. 
And because their brain does work differently, um, it, it, it just, you can watch that right. as it's passed through the family. It's mm-hmm. interesting. That so is. Strengths and, and weaknesses all combined. Yeah, and I know yeah. that Lauren mentions it. For anybody watching, Lauren and I are married. That's why I keep referencing her. Uh, <laughs> I felt like I probably need to say that. I just met her yesterday. Uh, so, yeah, so there's one thing that, you know, you mentioned a lot, talking about hereditary, is yeah. that you said that you were dyslexic growing up, and yeah. um, that probably a lot of your family was as well. So yeah. I know that we've talked about that Absolutely. in families. There's another one that came through, and then I would like to pass it to Kelly for a few moments to talk about testing. But this is a really good question. Um, it says... Do public schools have screening? Mm. Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> the, dys- the dyslexia law, Mississippi does have a dyslexia law, so if you didn't know, we, we are one of the only states that has a dyslexia law, and that law does require that screeners be given to kindergartners in the spring of kindergarten and then to first graders in hmm. the fall. Um, there are different screeners out there. If, um, if, you, if your child fails a screener, reach out to us, let us know. Um, or if they pass a screener and you still feel like something isn't quite right, we would love to give them, give them a screener. That's great. Very good. Very good. And I I think that you guys are really good about finding people and maybe they come from the public schools or maybe they come from a private school. And so that kind of is a great question to talk about the journey, Mm -hmm. right? To getting involved. Uh, maybe there's a parent watching tonight that wants to learn more. I know we had Elizabeth Lee earlier asking about this. So I want to move this to Kelly. Uh, for just a few moments, because you are a speech pa- language pathologist. I mean, you have all of the credentials, but you take a little bit of a different approach in this season for you right now in terms of what you're doing in this movement. So I'd love for you to tell our audience, what is it that you're doing with evaluations? Uh, well, what I'd like to tell you, um, as we all spoke about um, family mm. awareness and dyslexia, yeah. um, I am a certified speech language pathologist, also a dyslexia therapist. And um, I worked at the Dubard School for Language Disorders and worked a lot with, with language disorder children and then um, got into doing the, the diagnostic side of it and then also worked with the 3D school doing the diagnostic side of it. And then I had a child who, um, she, was, she just baffled me a little bit more than my older children mm-hmm. did. She didn't do her ABCs, like, and it wasn't just the LMNO you know, where we get that kind of stuff. It was the other letters. Mm -hmm. And um, the nursery rhymes didn't happen. Like, they happened with my other children. Mm -hmm. And um, she actually passed a dyslexia screener. Wow. And, um, (laughs) but we knew there was something going on. And so, um, at that point, um, it it was like, well, what do I do? Where do I go? Mm -hmm. And so, for me, that's kind of where my journey began um, into uh, the the dyslexia part. Even at an early age, kindergarten, preschool, yeah. um, because there are signs. And um, from there, uh, we have parent interviews. And um, through those parent interviews, we find out what teachers are saying and mm-hmm. what interventionists are saying. Wow. And, um, you know, have they had tutoring and did it work? And, um, you know, what are their grades like? And, um, and then from there, um, I will usually speak with the parents about filling out a developmental history for mm-hmm. me so I can see, you know, what um, has happened from the time of their birth and did they have speech delays and things like that. And um, and then from there, um, after I've reviewed everything mm-hmm. and um, uh, I will decide whether or not I'm the most appropriate fit for them. Because not every child has the characteristics that um, are necessarily dyslexic. Mm-hmm. And so we want to make sure that before I bring them in, and we have that opportunity with the child mm-hmm. that I really am the best fit professionally for sure. them. Yeah, that's for great. The parents. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that what you said, it really is indicative of the testing process itself because it's a lot more than just coming in one day and there being, you know, like a little mm-hmm. standardized test probably that many of us are thinking it looks like, yeah. like spell this word. Oh, you didn't get it right. You know, you must be dyslexic. <laughs> right. And Blake, I'd uh, like to speak on that. Sure, I mean, go there, ahead. There is not one test for dyslexia. Yeah. There's a dyslexia screener, but there's a battery of tests that have to wow. be given in order to do- diagnose mm-hmm. dyslexia. And we look at ability and achievement. We look at phonology. We look at oral reading. And um, we look at... Um, just d- the different areas that give us this preponderance of evidence. And then we can say, um, you know, fully and completely that yes, 
you know, we mm. have the standardized scores, but then we have all this other evidence. And sometimes it's really wow. just like searching through this puzzle, you know, to figure out how the pieces come together. Mm. And so it's, um, there's a lot more to it than just one little test that says sure. you have dyslexia. I mean, it's holistic. <laughs> I mean, it literally looks at the child's story. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so important is it's not just, you know, person, child A, you know, does it in a vacuum and this is it. It's much more, like you said, teacher interviews and getting them to fill out documentation and all those things, which I think is why it's so important, if I may kind of go off on the (laughs) rant it right here for a second. It's so important to choose the right person. Yes. To have your test done. Yeah. And Kelly, you didn't ask me to do this. This is probably why you're looking at me so weird. <laughs> but I would highly recommend anyone who is interested in getting their child tested to, to get in contact with Kelly Roundtree. We will put up her information here right now so that you can begin to initiate contact and say, hey, I think my child may be dyslexic. They failed a screener. Uh, they didn't fail a screener, but I still think something's up, as is was mm-hmm. the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, my daughter. That's yeah. right, exactly. And so mm-hmm. Kelly has a very personal story mm-hmm. um, and is very passionate about getting kids the right diagnosis to get them the help that they need. Mm-hmm. So that's why um, we only put the best of the best at the table. Mm-hmm. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And I also want to point out that all of us are here at this table because we've been personally affected mm-hmm. somehow in some way. So mm-hmm. we know how you're feeling. You're not alone. Um, so we're here for you. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Kelly, is there anything else about the evaluation setting, getting in contact with you that you'd like to tell any of our audience tonight? Um, I don't think, I think that just, uh, if you have questions, even if you find yourself saying, well, you know, maybe this is a silly question, please reach out. Mm -hmm. Um, My time that I share with you is um, important and valuable and it's part of the process. And if I'm on the phone with a parent for an hour and we're crying together and I mean, that's part of the process Mm -hmm. and it is, it does personally affect me. I, I, my child has dyslexia and she also has ADHD and she's also gifted. So I do have a strong emotional, um, feeling towards, you know, Mm -hmm. doing the assessments of dyslexia. So don't hesitate, reach out, Mm -hmm. make the phone call. Even if we don't determine that we need to test, if you have questions regarding assessments. That's great. There's no such thing as a silly question. No, that's right. Especially They're because, because I've already asked most of them. <laughs> that's probably why. Hey, we have a few more live questions that have come in, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we did have one that came through. This is more like celebration of y'all. Uh, these educators are awesome. Thank you. So thank you guys so much uh, for each other. And this one is from Corey Lee. He says, our son has speech and language therapy twice a week while in school. Uh, do you have any recommendations for maybe some online resources or something that we could use during school closures mm-hmm. in the summer? Mm. Anything that they could be using right now? For speech and language. That's a loaded question. Right. Not Yeah, without knowing exactly what he's seeing a speech and language pathologist for. Sure. I'm assuming articulation. Mm-hmm. Um, that falls more in your... I would think that the best thing for... Um, the parents to do would be to reach out to their speech language mm-hmm. pathologist at the school. Great. Um, I know I do work in the schools as well. And if parents have questions or if I can um, guide them to appropriate websites, mm-hmm. um, that's the best thing to do because mm-hmm. you can find a lot of information out there, mm-hmm. but you want to make sure that you're finding the best information right. and the most accurate information. So mm-hmm. that's, I would reach out to the speech language pathologist that they're seeing. And I think that's so important to remember too, is there's so many different types of information out there. Yeah. Google is a great resource, but it's also probably the biggest hurdle mm-hmm. for awareness and proper you know, instruction of students mm-hmm. with dyslexia. So we highly encourage anybody who is interested in helping their child out, Contact Kelly. <laughs> Probably give Kelly a call. <laughs> or, uh, you know, your speech language, your speech path at your school um, or in your district. We also had another one uh, from Corey earlier. I missed it. And I think this is one I meant to read first and then the other one. But it says, dyslexia and other learning disabilities are sometimes invisible disabilities mm-hmm. to those who may not be able to easily recognize them. Yes. What mm-hmm. advice could you give to people who are not familiar with dyslexia about being more considerate and maybe conscious of those who may have issues with learning. Mm -hmm. So I have a thought on that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, we incorrectly assume that a dyslexic child who is struggling to read maybe isn't trying hard enough, Mm -hmm. or they're not working hard enough, or they're not doing enough work at home. Mm -hmm. And what I find is that that's just not true. Mm -hmm. Their disability is not their fault. 
and they are working. They're working harder than any other child at the table, mm. and that's where that frustration comes from. And sometimes they, sadly, they 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 internalize, struggle yeah. with their self confidence, wow. and that's one of the things we do. Mm at our school is we build them up mm -hmm. and celebrate their differences That's and great. their strengths mm -hmm. because their strengths are many. Wow. Mm -hmm. And in just a moment, we're actually going to have a parent testimony uh, of a student who came to a school that's similar to the one that's beginning in August. And I can't wait for you guys to hear that story. It's going to be phenomenal. But we had a few more um, questions that came through. Uh, what requirements, if any, are needed for a student to attend Lighthouse Academy? Sure, I'll, I'll take that one. Thank you. Uh, in order to attend Lighthouse Academy, a diagnosis of dyslexia has to be given. And the reason for that is because your child could be seeing the warning signs. And um, what Kelly does is with the family history is just to make sure that, like she said, that we're the best fit. Mm -hmm. And so um, a, a diagnosis of dyslexia um, is required just to make sure that what we give is what they need. That's great. Awesome. Yeah, so our program isn't for everyone. It's specifically designed with the dyslexic brain in mind. That's right. And yeah. mm -hmm. otherwise, we could drive other kids absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the repetitive nature of what we do mm -hmm. is um, definitely not for And I everyone. think that that's something, because when you guys were starting this journey, you were very passionate about having dyslexia in the name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not just Lighthouse Academy, mm -hmm. but a Lighthouse Academy for dyslexia. Because it's very specific with the mission that you guys are on to help students with dyslexia shine, mm -hmm. essentially. Help enable possibilities. And also to kind of take out the sting of that word, dyslexia. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a good Stay. thing. It's, it gives you power. Mm -hmm. You know, once you, once you can put your hands on it and know what's going on, it gives you power to be able to um, give what your child needs. Mm -hmm. so Knowledge we, is power. That's yeah, exactly right. That's exactly right. And so, since we've been talking about it a little bit already, I kind of wanted to move for a few minutes on talking about the school specifically. So now we have a little bit more of an information about dyslexia, which I've already felt like I've had a great lesson. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Um, but I want to move into some questions specifically about Lighthouse Academy uh, itself. And so, Sora, I'd love to start with you. Um, what's the vision of the Academy? So, Blake, our vision is very simple. The vision of Lighthouse Academy for Dyslexia is to see children with dyslexia reach their full academic potential. Wow. And in so doing, to help them know their, and be confident in their intrinsic value. Mm. Man, that's so good. Because it's about the student. Mm -hmm. It's I, That's what I love so much about the school. Mm -hmm. Is your focus isn't so much on dyslexia as much as it is students with dyslexia. Mm -hmm. It's about the kids. Mm -hmm. And it's about helping them feel, I think you said it earlier, about helping that self-confidence to glow. That's why you guys picked Lighthouse. Mm -hmm. yes. It's because you want to be the beacon of hope mm -hmm. for these students to ultimately become their own beacons mm -hmm. in their lives. That's phenomenal. I could go on all day about that, but we'll move on because <laughs> we only got an hour. Hey, uh, Stephanie, what's the mission? Yeah. What's the mission of the Academy? Okay, so a couple of things. One thing we kind of brainstormed when we started all of this was we think that there's a lack of awareness. Mm. And, and you know, that's one of the reasons that we even suggested doing a Q and A is because uh, we want people to understand how special dyslexia is. And we want the community to understand how valuable it is to have these students reaching their full potential. So that's the first pillar of our, of our mission of our school is community awareness. Mm. And then of course it's focused next on the students and on teaching them through this scientifically research-based multi-sensory. I mean, it's, it's fully uh, all about, it's all research mm -hmm. out there for you. Yeah. Um, and that's something that I never realized before either. But the program that we use um, is from a great school in Texas, and we are rocking and rolling with it. It's a three-year program, and we hope to, at the end of that three years, get those kids ready for where they can go on to their next school. That's Fair. so good. Awesome. I love it. The mission is so good. And so we've heard the vision. We've heard the mission. How does that all play out in a normal day? This question is for Lauren in a normal day at Lighthouse Academy? It yeah, like? so just a normal day at Lighthouse Academy. Um, we start every morning um, with an hour of dyslexia therapy, which our students know as reading lab. And um, that lasts for an hour. And then that is then followed up with another hour of a language arts period, which um, also includes reading. Many of the concepts taught in reading lab are retouched on in language, because what we know with dyslexia is more repetition, the better. Mm -hmm. 
and um, it also touches on all the other components of language. Um, we also offer grade level math instruction, science and social studies. Um, we have a morning recess and an afternoon recess. Um, and so um, that's kind of a, a look into a, a day in a nutshell. A day, yeah. A day in a nutshell. Uh, recess would probably be my favorite. Right. <laughs> Both of them. Both of them. Hey, Tracy, so we've already kind of seen, you know, you guys got the nice jackets on and everything. And, uh, you guys are experts. I mean, there's no doubt about it in your field and, and kind of pushing forward the awareness for dyslexia. But what are the qualifications for teachers and therapists? Lighthouse Academy. Uh, yeah, so um, we require to teach at our school that you're a part of our program because we are a Orton Gillingham based program mm -hmm. and that word gets thrown around a lot um, and it can be quite confusing to a parent who doesn't really understand what that term means. Mm -hmm. Our particular um, qualifications required 720 hours wow. of, yeah, of clinical work on top of a master's degree. So wow. 30 hours of graduate level study with 700, minimum of 720 hours. Most of us wind up with somewhere around 800 wow. when we're done yeah. in order to get a child through the three, um, yeah, of clinical hours. So it's it's quite an undertaking. You do not do this for the money. Mm. And you do not, um, Dr. Holzold always said, if you want to get a master's degree in education and you want something easy, this isn't the route this for isn't you. The one. <laughs> yeah, this is wow. you can get a master's degree in a year. Mm -hmm. So go pick another route because mm -hmm. this isn't fast and it's not easy. Yeah. But it is incredibly rewarding. Mm. It's incredibly yeah. rewarding. Yeah. It's rigorous and it it's proven yeah. when it's finished. Mm -hmm. I, I think we have a couple of people that are still in kind of finishing up the program mm -hmm. and you guys would agree that it's rigorous. But it's, uh, yes, but but that it's rewarding. But rewarding. Yeah. 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 Deeply rewarding yes. work. Wow. Yep. I'd like to reiterate for a second for all the people that, you know, aren't as nearly, uh, I think, f like forward educationally as you guys are, like me, um, <laughs> the, that's 800 hours of clinical study. Yeah. Like, I want to let that settle in for a second. At least two years. At least two years <laughs> of you guys. Just to get the degree. <laughs> just to get the degree? Yeah. And that's what's so phenomenal to me is, in, and this may be another, you know, uh, kind of tirade of mine for a second. But there is so many things that you could go to Google for and, and read about and maybe try to do and, you know, with a good heart. Like, right. I could try to do yeah. it with a good heart. But I think the beautiful thing about this is that you guys have poured your life right. into this one mission. Right. And so if any of you have any questions about dyslexia or your student may be struggling or going through the warning signs, I highly, highly, highly couldn't recommend it enough to reach out to this team mm -hmm. because they have put in the work. They've put in the work to answer your questions, and so uh, that is a that is a huge thing um, that 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 they have been pouring their lives into over and over. So one second, I kind of want to give you guys a break. We've been talking for a few minutes now. I want to get set up, but we want to show everybody who is watching tonight a commercial that's been going around on WLOX um, and a bunch of different places. And so go ahead and check this out: the Lighthouse Academy commercial. Take a look. And you may notice we did like a little shuffle, a little, a little switcheroo <laughs> on you. That was completely planned. Um, so we, I, I told you guys earlier that we had a friend that's going to be joining us tonight, Cecilia Ballard. Thank you so much. Thanks for, for having me. Yes, we really do appreciate it. We, we told her earlier that she was wearing gold because like she is the story, right? Like, that's right. So everybody else is the lighthouse and you're the beacon, right? And so... Yeah. Um, but you, you have a, a student who has gone through this program and has been impacted mm -hmm. on their life tremendously. So we'd love to hear a little bit about who's your student that uh, was in the program. And kind of give us a little overview of how you guys got started. Okay. Um, well, my son's name is Simeon. And uh, we found out about we're going into our fourth year mm -hmm. of receiving support with dyslexia therapy. Um, mm -hmm. That journey has been, for me, he is 12 years old now, wow. and 
that journey has gone on for at least eight years. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many uncertainties with truly knowing that dyslexia is present. I think all of you have done a great job of discussing what it is, and I wish I had heard you <laughs> when he was about two years old. <laughs> Everything that y'all have said is just um, what we've experienced mm -hmm. on our journey. Um, but it started out with me just really not really looking at him as, mm. you know, the, the kid that had the concern. He was, it was mainly me saying, oh, well, if the environment was a little different, wow. you know, maybe he would do, do better. Uh, maybe if he were in, you know, he, he started out in what's called an international baccalaureate program. Mm. It's an IB school um, in the area that we moved from. And he tested in, he did fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and performed well until they started reading wow. and needing to take letters and put the sounds together. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started getting those conferences with the teachers <laughs> that kind of told me that, hey, um, we need Simeon to be more independent. Mm -hmm. The words that the teachers were using weren't the words that you all are using. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and I am very, uh, I'm, a, I'm a cheerleader of public mm -hmm. education. Sure. Mm -hmm. but the ladies here and the education you've received doesn't compare to what we received along the way mm -hmm. with, you know, being told that he needs to be more independent, he needs to uh, listen more, he needs to try harder. Mm -hmm. um, it was about three years ago that I believe the Lord sent us to this wow. area. Mm -hmm. And we moved to this area trying to be in a an area where we thought the public schools were better mm -hmm. than the area we came from. And I started seeing the same sign. And mm -hmm. that's when my truth was evident mm -hmm. that it wasn't the environment. I had to look within, wow. you know, myself and my child for, you know, the answer. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a hard thing to do, you know, on the front end, especially when you don't have a definition mm -hmm. for what's going on. It's hard to be intrinsically look at the situation and say, okay, there's something here. But the fact that you did is testament, I mean, to your faith and, and moving forward and trusting God in that. Um, but I'd like to move back, if you don't mind, just for a few minutes to talking about, because you said something that was really interesting. You said, I wish I would have known eight years ago when he was two, what you guys were saying now. And that's really interesting because I'd love to hear, when did you first recognize that something was different about the way Simeon was processing? Okay. Um, well, if I go back to when he was two, let me see, because I might have a, just a tap. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. um, that would have been 10 years ago, because he's 12 now, so right. at two, right. um, he was in daycare, and I was one of those parents that wanted to know, is my child performing? Yeah, there you, there you go, there you go. Yeah. You and, should tell him what your background is, Cecilia, yeah, how highly educated you are for that performance driven. Well, yeah. yes, I do have a background in education, um, about I'm into my 14th year now, but I'm not oh, a teacher. Right. I'm a behavior specialist and a counselor. So gotcha. that's very different from a teacher. And that's I respect right. what teachers and educators <laughs> we do. We respect you. Yes. Yes. Um, but you were not an educated about development. You were, no, yeah. I so, I mean, if you were struggling, oh my goodness, the parent that mm -hmm. doesn't come from your background right. needs to feel okay that they didn't pass exactly. that. That's they need to give themselves right. permission mm -hmm. to say, You're exactly this right. is hard. Mm -hmm. This is hard to catch. Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. Um, but at two, I asked his daycare teacher uh, if he were meeting all the milestones that she expected. And her response was, Simeon is a very smart kid. And then there was the but. The but. <laughs> um, but he's different from mm -hmm. the other kids. And I didn't, when she said that, I said, how so? And her response was, I don't know. Mm -hmm. wow. So from that point, uh, I knew that I didn't take it as a, uh, a put down or a let down, but it was a drive mm -hmm. to figure out yeah. what that. Your mission was. began. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, like I said, we, we then, you know, he performed seemingly well, like, like you all said, verbal skills were there. Mm -hmm. So he took the verbal assessment to get into his IB school and he performed. Mm -hmm. um, but during that first year, the kindergarten teacher would talk about the independence, which mm -hmm. now in hindsight was needing to, to have things repeated exactly. over and mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then I had the principal say, have you had Simeon's hearing checked? And... 
I didn't know how to respond to that, but now I know there's yeah. a little bit of a delay with yeah. a response sometimes right. with a child mm-hmm. with dyslexia. Mm-hmm. Um, because mm-hmm. when they receive the information, they sometimes have to think about yeah. mm-hmm. what you know what it is they need to say or sure. how they need to respond. Sure. So that happened at five. Um, mm-hmm. We stayed there one more year because, oh, I wanted my smart child to be <laughs> right, at that right. school. And <laughs> by first grade, when you know we were pretty much fighting every mm. morning. And when I say fighting, he protested the whole ride to school. Mm. Um, and the teacher had gotten very firm with, I need him to perform at this level. Um, and Simeon would come home crying, saying, mm. you know, my throat, my throat. Mm. Now that's where my background comes in. And when I have a child saying my throat and I take you to the doctor and there's absolutely nothing wrong <laughs> with your throat, then I know that's pressure mm-hmm. and that is you know, an inability to perform the way someone else wants. And mm-hmm. that's yeah. where, you know, I had to make that decision to say, wow. hey, you know, this is, it's time for us to just leave. Mm. Mm-hmm. So you, you went on the journey and you had heard all of these different things. And so you, you get to the point where you get the assessment, right? You get the evaluation for dyslexia. Mm-hmm. It comes back that it is likely that Simeon has dyslexia. How did you feel in that moment when he was diagnosed? Well, I had a screener done with a professional that was a lot like Kelly. And <laughs> she did her screener with him. She's retired now, so she is not on, on the market. <laughs> um, she did the screener and she was like happy. Right. And I was, I was like, what's going on? She was like, girl, this is the poster child for dyslexia. Wow. She was like, I don't, you know, she said she wished she could have just stopped testing and, and you know, doing the screener and mm-hmm. just told me to go on. And, <laughs> you know, this is what it is. Right, but, right. Uh, you know, then I contacted, uh, at the time, the 3D school's um, mm-hmm. psychometrist, and we went through the testing, and she was, she did the same thing. She wow. said, yeah, without even getting a report, she just sat with him, did a few of the batteries, and she knew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. And so that was my probably I would imagine a little bit of a relief now that you had a name. It was it was there was a lot of relief. Yeah. Um, you know we finally had an answer exactly. for all those years sure. and we had a school that was coming yeah, with the help yeah, so that's right. we celebrated that's so you know good. once we found out. Um, yeah. But I will say just speaking you know personally there was a lot of guilt. That we also, me and my husband also experienced in this process because it took so long for us to accept that, you know, mm-hmm. we needed to get the testing done. Wow. So, um, like Miss Houston said, the earlier you discover, the easier it is to intervene. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of guilt that mm-hmm. I had seen it so much earlier, but we didn't start getting true mm-hmm. support until fourth grade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But still, I mean, I think that it's a testament and something you can talk to as well, Mm -hmm. Simeon's progress in the program. So tell us a little bit about that. I mean, Simeon starts at what is the 3D school, Mm -hmm. um, and he begins the the journey there in dyslexia intervention. Tell us a little bit about his progress. Okay, so I left you all off at that first grader that had that, you know, that frog in his throat the one day, you know, just complained every day. Uh, At 3D school, he went from that child, one that didn't want to talk and speak out, one that didn't want to um, be who he was, Mm -hmm. to a child that is proud to say, I am dyslexic, Mm -hmm. I have dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a picture that brings tears to my eyes of him on the steps of the Capitol building in Jackson, you know, uh, advocating for other kids with dyslexia. So he's not afraid to say I have That's right. Um, another thing that I noticed, uh, you know, this this whole social distancing and distance learning process mm-hmm. has been one that has been quite a learning experience for me. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't a child that wanted to say anything, you know, as it relates to participation. He'd play and do all kinds of other things, but now I'm having to say, you know, let someone else in. Right, 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 right. Give someone else a chance to say something because he wants to answer everything. Yeah. He's become so confident. He is yeah. so confident. Wow. So I love that. it's been it's been a joy to see his mm. progress since working with these kids. Yeah. That's so and good. others that sure, have yeah. come along the way. That's phenomenal. And I I think you said it right there. There may be some people that are watching tonight that may have this little feeling in their gut that they don't want to label their child. Yeah. 
right, that they don't want to put the moniker dyslexic mm -hmm. over their child mm -hmm. as a banner. But, I mean, you're saying the converse of that, mm -hmm. that he went to the Capitol steps and was advocating mm -hmm. because he's proud to say, hey, look, this is it. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, tell us a little bit, what would you say to the parent who may be struggling with stepping forward and getting the intervention that they need because they don't want to put the label there? Well, here's the thing, parents. You have to know um, and trust your instincts. Mm. You are your child's first teacher. So if you believe that there is an issue there, especially if you believe that your child has dyslexia, uh, take the steps. Uh, educate yourself. Uh, seek support from trained individuals. Wow. These ladies here are experts in what they do. Kelly is an expert in what she does. Mm -hmm. um, be who you need to be for your child because mm -hmm. their voice isn't big enough just yet. Mm -hmm. And know that you're not making a mistake. Dyslexia is not a death sentence for your child, but rather uh, it empowers your child. It wow. helps them to believe in who they are. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be afraid to do what you need to do to help your kids. And I mean, so last we're just going to take <laughs> that little segment and we're just going to turn it into a commercial. Like, that's what we're going to put on TV. Yeah. That's so good. Okay. So what would you say? Uh, and I think you've already started this journey, but okay. So let's say you convince the parents, right? As a last question, what would you say to any parent who's like, all right, I'm about to take the step. What should I do? Okay. There is help. There are supports and programs that are effective and there are people that are here mm -hmm. um, in this world. You know, if you're not on the Gulf Coast, wherever you are, find people just like these ladies mm -hmm. and get the help they need. Um, if you are on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, contact the Lighthouse Academy for Dyslexia. <laughs> they are here to do their job. That's it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Cecilia. We very much appreciate Thank your you time with us and uh, what a phenomenal story yeah. that we've had. We had a few more live questions come in, so if you yeah. guys are still up for it, Kelly, yeah. we may go ahead and get you guys to switch. I think we had a couple <laughs> more about testing Thank um, you. to come Thank in. You. Thank you so much, Cecilia. We really do appreciate it. Um, so, uh, so we had a few more questions come in live, and these came in actually before we started the video. They came in through direct messages and different things like that. So I'm just going to toss them out. Whoever wants to re respond, feel free to do so. <laughs> First question, do you have to commit to three years in the program? Oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to, but it's a huge mistake not to. You're going to see that first year we used to build them up and get them started. That's the basics, and you're going to see some big differences. Your second year, you're going to see huge differences. Mm -hmm. Most parents are tempted to pull at the end of the second year because what they thought was not possible is now what's happening is beyond their wildest dreams for the most part. And they're, they've got a child who's now reading and spelling and writing and they come out of their shell mm -hmm. and they think, oh my gosh, we're done. But if you pull out before the end of that third year, oh my gosh, it's like making yeah. an ice cream sundae and forgetting your cherry and your whipped cream. <laughs> right, the best part. And your, yeah, your top nuts. So yeah. all you're going to have is ice cream and fudge. Wow. So um, you that last year we do so much. Mm. You go in-depth into the history of the English language, which I was teasing Lauren at the beginning. Um, <laughs> you'd have to be in our group to understand that so much of our spelling seems crazy and wild, like it's this language that you just dumped a bunch of stuff in a pot and started around. Yeah. It's not like that at all. Wow. Um, it's a pyramid, and our history and who we are as a people, English-speaking people, is has evolved mm. our language. And so having a knowledge of that history is power, and it allows our kids to understand more complex spelling right, yeah. um, by understanding the morphemes, the tiny bits that make up language mm. that have meaning to them and that is linked to spelling if you've ever watched national spelling bee and the child says can you give me the origin of yeah, that word? Word. Yeah. there's a reason they're asking for the that's origin you, you spell differently yeah. depending on the origin of the word How about this? and here in the united states we've got anglo-saxon old english we've got um, Greek, we have Latin, and then we have a little bit of everything else on top. There you go. And the way you would spell um, just something like ch, that k sound, mm -hmm. for example, it's k sh, and it's ch. Yeah. So yeah. 
you you got to know where that comes from right. and that word to, to get that spelling down correctly. Wow. Mm-hmm. Everything um, that you can learn in year three yes. of the word. So we have a few more questions. We have 10, nine minutes left. So the way I want to do this, kind of treat it as like rapid round. Right? <laughs> so like, <laughs> so, yeah, so quick answers and um, just kind of whoever wants to take them. Popcorn reading, as they would call it back in the day, but I don't know if it's popcorn answering. Um, so, after school care for Lighthouse Academy, is there um, after school care available? Not yet known. <laughs> okay. Well, so, we go have, ahead, Stephanie. Well, the YMCA is very close to us, so <laughs> very, close. <laughs> very close Welcome in the same door. building. Yeah. Uh, and they provide before and after school care yes. if you choose. I'm sure Great. there are some other places, but that's the closest, mm-hmm. and they work really well. We had several students who've done that in the past couple of years. That's great. Quick and easy. And awesome. We've had a couple of questions come through concerning tuition and payments for both evaluations in the school. I would love to invite anybody who's interested for a more in-depth, I think we could spend all day probably on the whys and the whats, (laughs) but again, I want to send you to the website, uh, lighthousedyslexia.org. There you can find all the information that you need concerning payment, tuition, all of that kind of good stuff. But there is a question that came through that I think we could spend a little bit of time on talking about tuition assistance. Uh, There's some info, I think, that we have concerning tuition assistance. Anybody mm-hmm. want to talk about that? Sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I, we uh, are pleased, our board of directors is pleased to provide an application for tuition assistance. Um, the cost of this education um, is significant, mm-hmm. but we want to make it available to the people that need it. Mm-hmm. So please um, you know, take advantage, complete the application. It is based on need. Um, and it does have some limitations, but our intent is to make make what we do available to those who need it. So wow. we are happy to be able to provide some tuition assistance. That's so great. Awesome. And I know that there's several ways, you know, I think there's ins and outs on so many different avenues that people could take for tuition assistance, mm-hmm. including the one that you just provided, Sorrel. There's also something called ESA. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a question that came through talking about what can I do about ESA? Does somebody kind of want to give us an overview of what ESA is? Maybe um, Kelly or Tracy? Yeah, Kelly and I can probably bounce off each other on this because you're in the process of mm-hmm. actually process. yeah, applying for that. And you yeah. and I have been bantering back and forth on the phone yeah. about it. So um, that's an educational scholarship account that's through the state. You do, as of right now, need an IEP from your public school. If you have an IEP, you'll know it because you've been to those meetings. Um, and I would encourage you quickly to fill out paperwork, go online to the Mississippi Department of Education, download that application. Right now they only have the one from 1920 mm-hmm. up, so they have not uploaded 2021s yet. Mm-hmm. But the deadline is usually June 30th. Now we're hoping they're going to push that deadline back since they have not been open because of the COVID-19 response. Right. But um, they haven't announced that. So I would, I would encourage you, download that application, get your information together, apply. That particular ESA money, that is more than what we can offer in a scholarship. Wow. It is it is more than half of the tuition, mm. usually, and um, it is it is a huge help to families. That's great. So it's an excellent use of, of that money. Mm. And that does not actually come from the public schools, even though it's awarded by MDE. A lot of parents get confused about that. Right. It's a separate pot of money mm-hmm. that um, gets pulled for students that have needs. Okay. So, awesome. And like I would add one more thought. Sure. Mm-hmm. A lot of our students have extended family that pull together yes. to help them come to school. Some That's of right. our students come an hour or more each way to get to school, but also extended family can help with tuition. Mm-hmm. So um, think outside the box yeah. in terms of Absolutely. support, network, family. Yeah. Support. No better gift you can give your grandchild or your niece or your godchild than the gift of a lifelong reason. The literal Absolutely. tools that they need to succeed yeah. in life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's that important. Right. It's yeah. that important. Is that, is that application difficult for the ESA to fill out? It is not. And I wanted to say that as well. Like, don't be discouraged and don't think, oh gosh, where am I going to find it on Mississippi Department of Education? It was very easy to find. I think I put in Mississippi Department mm-hmm. of Education, ESA. And um, came up, um, if your child has an IP, you know that Mm -hmm. they do. You're going to have to have a copy of that. You have to have a copy of a report that gives that diagnosis, which you should have gotten from the school or from another professional. And then it's just, I mean, just a few questions. Mm -hmm. And um, no money has to be sent. Um, So Mm -hmm. 
and then you'll find out whether or not they accept your application. That's great. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we'll talk a little bit more on closing remarks about all of those next steps, I think, because there may be a lot of overwhelming thoughts about, wow, they just rattle off a bunch of acronyms about stuff. And um, so we'll talk a little bit about that later. But one more question I think is very imperative uh, going into, especially in the season that we're in right now, mm -hmm. you guys are starting a new school mm -hmm. in August, launching in August. We are in the middle of a national pandemic unlike yeah. anything we've seen yeah. in not just our lifetimes, but our parents' lifetimes and yeah. probably them before that. Mm -hmm. um, so are you prepared to take this school online coming in August should the case, you know, the need arise? Oh, we've got lots of practice. Yeah, we've got lots of practice. We've been completely online for the last Two eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. Our kids have not missed therapy. As a matter of fact, they what, dismissed us on Friday. Yeah. On Wednesday, our kids had packets, and they were up doing lessons. I mean, we, we handed those packets out on Tuesday, right? Yeah. We literally had two days to put together a month's worth of lessons. We worked right through spring break because we had parents home. Wow. Um, from their jobs, so we provided online educational services, mm -hmm. um, essentials. Now, we know our kids struggle mm -hmm. to sit in front. Of, we don't want them sitting in front of a computer for six to eight hours, sure. so we know how stressed out they get. Mm -hmm. So they've received, on average, two, two and a half hours of online instruction every day, and then 30 minutes to an hour of homework based on different subjects. Mm -hmm. So um, they've I feel like they've gotten a lot they considering. Know, and considering. Yeah. yeah. I hate to even think about doing it again, but if we do, I do hate to think you're about prepared. It. We, we are prepared. We are prepared. Yeah. We have, I think we everybody's have a system prepared. in place. That's great. System, yeah. well, that's exciting. Any last words that you guys would want to speak? 10 seconds uh, before we hang it up. We've got just a few more moments together. Anything else? Hmm. <laughs> I would just say that I just want you to know that you're not alone. Hmm. Uh, we know that 15 to 20 percent of our population is affected by dyslexia so you're not alone you're not singled out um like cecilia said we're here as uh, just a resource for you or for your child and um just let us know if we can answer any questions yeah. i hope this was helpful very good awesome yeah and if you're in a civic organization we'd love to come present yes. get in touch with us we, you know, our mission is to educate mm -hmm. our population on what dyslexia is and what it's not mm. I would like to dispel the myths of what it's not. Yeah. That's right. That's great stuff. Well, hey, thank you all so much for joining us tonight for our live Q&A session with the experts uh, talking about Dyslexia Awareness in the Lighthouse Academy. Thank you guys for coming thank and you. sitting and thank listening you, to our Mike questions for an hour. Jesse. Yeah, and Jesse back so here, hey. our uh, production <laughs> guy. There he is. That's so awesome. Hey, a couple of next steps really quickly before you go. First, if you're a parent, and you're wondering if your child may have dyslexia, but you haven't taken a screen or you haven't taken an evaluation, reach out to Lighthouse Academy for Dyslexia. We could not encourage it enough. Even if you think it might just partially be a, a case, go ahead and reach out. There's nothing that that would hurt. In fact, it can do only, uh, it can do nothing but help. And so we would love for you to do that. You can go to our website at lighthousedyslexia.org. There you can apply for the school. You can learn more about evaluations with Kelly. We would highly uh, um, encourage you to do that. And don't let money be what stops you. From, this is exactly what Sorrel said. There's extended family. There's significant assistance. There's ESA. And if you have any questions about that, reach out to us as well. We'd be more than willing and the team would be more than willing to help answer any question that you have. This is just the beginning mm -hmm. of the conversation. Right. This isn't the end. Sure. This yeah. is just the initiation of what I think is going to be a great movement for yeah. dyslexia awareness on the coast. I'm Especially really excited Especially all those kindergartners. Who That's right. Screeners. If you've got a kindergartner that That's right. their screener, bring them in. Yeah, we'll give them a screener for free. To do their screeners. Free, screeners. Yeah. free screeners coming your way this summer as well. I think it's going to be something <laughs> yeah. that First we have. Um, also, if you're watching this and maybe you're someone who has a heart for children, a heart for education, and you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, would you consider prayerfully giving and donating to Lighthouse Academy? We would be honored by your gifts, we would very much like and, and be appreciative of anyone who'd be willing to partner with us to help shine a light for students with dyslexia on the coast. But that's it for us here. We're excited that you joined us, and we'll see you next time. There will surely be more of these events, I'm sure. And so we will see you later. See you later. Bye, Good everyone. Night, Good night. Good night.